Hello everybody, this is the Solid Waste Disposal Lecture. So I wanted to start thinking about solid waste by just asking, you know, what is our garbage? What, what is it made out of? Currently what we see is, what do we throw away? We throw a lot of paper, food scraps, glass, a lot of yard waste, and then plastic metals, and then just a bunch of other stuff, right? Now we've seen a huge change to in what this pie chart would look like versus what it would look like in the 1950s, what it would have looked like in the you know 1800s or whatever. What we've seen is since the 1950s, we've really gone to what you know some sort of disposable lifestyle where um, there's a lot more single-use plastics where um, you know convenience what was billed as a convenience is kinda changed into what many people see as a necessity so you know one of the ways we can like you know anecdotally show this is that 1953 was um, Swanson Foods sold the first TV dinner and it was this big idea of having you know this plate that you could just literally pull out, put in the oven, they didn't even have microwaves at this time, right? Put in the oven and you could throw everything away v very easily and it was meant to, you know, free up time to be able to sit down and watch TV while you're eating dinner, right? Um, so this really increased the, 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 this idea of, you know, using a lot more disposable products and, and plastics has really increased the garbage volumes. So what we see is, um, you know, we've seen a 50% increase of garbage in the U.S. here since 1960. But as our population has somewhat stabilized and how th there's been a lot of regulations now on what we can and cannot throw away, um, our garbage volumes have pretty much stabilized for the last 30 or so years. Um, what we're seeing though is that urban areas are actually running out of way areas, running out of places to put their trash and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. So if you look at, you know, where do we see this increase? What we've seen is a huge increase in paper being thrown away. I mean, this is a huge increase in paper production also. Um, yard waste has increased. Uh, and plastics have really increased compared to what they were and what they are now. It's a huge increase in plastics. But you know, all of these things are um, increased. The only decreases we actually really see are in in the last you know 20, 30 years, seeing a decrease in the amount of yard waste that are put into the U.S. So what do we do with our trash? Well, there's different ways, different things you can do it, and we'll spend talking about the first couple. Um, parts of these in this lecture and get to you know reduction in garbage um, later on in other lectures but we can put it in a landfill we can burn it we can compost it and then we can you know reduce the amount of trash that we're making in the first place reuse some of our products and then recycle those products so let's think about that landfill first um, and this is by far what most of the solid waste in the U.S. It, where it's put. Um, and how a landfill essentially works is they're actually pretty interesting places that have a lot of technology um, dealt or you know integrated into them, but um, not uh, not a lot of people really know that. So. Um, one of the reasons why, so one of the things that you might not think about is that when does garbage get picked up at your house? It's always in the morning, right? Like between 5 a.m. until maybe 8 or 9 a.m. It's never late. And I was wondering, you know, what are these trash people doing past 10 a.m. Why can't they just start? Why can't they pick up my trash at you know 9 a.m. or 2 p.m. or you know 4 p.m.? Well, what happens is those garbage trucks need to go into the morning because pick up the garbage, bring it to the landfill, 
dump it in the landfill and then bulldozers will compact all of that waste in into a trench and every day they actually have to cover it with a six inch uh, layer of, of, of dirt basically. And what this does is it allow or it prevents a lot of the escape of trash that um, that is you know really bad. We if if we throw something away, we want it to stay there. And um, this this six inch earth cover earth covering every day is super important for that issue. Um, so every day they you know basically fill in. Um, the, this part of the the landfill gets filled in more and you know essentially what a landfill is is just a hole in the ground where they put dirt uh, or where they put trash the thing is there is an impermeable layer that they have to lay down um, and they have to put pipes below that impermeable layer that any leaks that they do collect uh, will go into those pipes rather than leaking potentially into the groundwater or other places. Um, I shouldn't say that it's, I, I realize I said that it's a hole in the ground. Many, many landfills will, you know, once they fill up their hole, then they'll start um, putting, do, just doing this on top of the landfill until it's a big, basically mountain of trash and what we've seen in uh, recent years then is that landfill numbers are declining uh, either a landfill gets full and it can't be used anymore there's violations and they don't want to put trash in it, in it anymore um, and they're expensive to maintain run and build new ones are an incredibly expensive issue um, the thing is, space really isn't an issue. We have plenty of space for trash. Like we could just designate, you know, the entire state of Nebraska as um, this is where we put all of our trash, right? There's never, we're never really going to run out of space. We have plenty of land to put our trash. It's just that it might seem like we're running out of space because of all of the like regulations that are required for a landfill. And then beyond that, where do you actually put the landfill? Because essentially, nobody wants their landfill in a landfill in their backyard. You know, they're somewhat stinky. There's trash that escapes from them, um, and you know, there's the potential for you know bad things to leak out of it. So people, um, when they find out a landfill is proposed in a certain area, you know, pretty much all the time people are fighting for that or against it because they don't want that landfill in their backyard and you know I totally understand that but we need to put that trash somewhere we can't just let it you know just dump it out in the ground anywhere so one of the um, solutions uh, proposed solutions and there's plenty of places that do this is to burn the garbage uh, and this is for um, it's good because it can reduce the volume of the trash. Uh, get a fire hot enough, and you know most things will burn. And um, you know a lot of the trash might be wet, but then they um, can, if they get the fire hot enough, they can deal with that, right? And it's energy expensive. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, they if they have dry enough product, dry enough trash, then they the trash can like burn on its own. But, you know, a lot of trash will need to be uh, burned with, with fossil fuels, basically. But what it does is it reduces the volume of the trash by 90%. That means, you know, you can, let, if we were to burn all of our trash, our current landfills would last much longer. It gets rid of a lot of the weight. Um, but, you know, where does all that stuff go? It goes up into the air. Right, so by decreasing solid waste, you're actually increasing air pollution. Um, so that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, you're going to be creating a lot of CO2 as you're burning this trash, and it's you know not not a great thing. You're also creating, you're concentrating the toxicity of the trash into the ash and the ash still needs to be put in a landfill um, so it's it's not necessarily for a variety of reasons not 
always the best situation. Um, it's also more expensive, right? You're adding an extra step here uh, and a pretty complicated step. Even though you can harness some energy from the burning of that trash, you're still, um, you know, going through a whole extra step that requires special, you know, places, equipment, transportation. Um, so, but but this is really dependent on space. So if you don't have a bunch of space and you can't transport your garbage real far, it makes sense to incinerate your garbage because then you'll actually have a place to put it. So with that, um, I'll leave you and hope you all have a great day.